everyone and welcome back to my channel well guys if you are following a little bit everything that is going on here on my youtube channel in my studio then you know it probably already that a couple of months ago i've announced some sort of a collaboration slash competition with you to celebrate 500,000 subscribers on my channel i've asked you to draw different doll designs the ones that you would love to see recreated in a doll form and to send them to me and as a result i've got over 800 amazing artworks from you really it was absolutely fantastic you could see all these artworks probably in june somewhere yeah mid-june or end june i've uploaded that video and yeah, it was of course extremely difficult to find one winner out of all these 800 plus amazing artworks. So I've picked up actually two winners. The first winner is Andrea Maxwell with this amazing glow-in-the-dark jellyfish. And the second winner is Lady Wellflower with this fantastic koi fish mermaid. So guys, and today it's finally time for me to make a doll for one of our winners, for the first one. And of course, as you could see it already from the thumbnail, today we are going to make the koi fish mermaid, especially for Lady Wellflower. I'm going to send this doll to her after it's finished. But you know, before I start working, I want to correct one huge mistake. In that video where I showcased all the artworks that you have submitted for my contest, it seems I've missed a couple of artworks because I saw your comments under this video and I can tell you guys, it was my biggest nightmare all the time when I was working on this final video, when I was selecting the winner, when I was putting all these artworks together, I was so scared to miss a drawing, to miss an artwork. So, of course, this is exactly what has happened. And I've promised you guys that I'm going to bring all these artworks back to public. So, right now you can see them on the screen. But I can tell you honestly, guys, this is some sort of a technical issue. Like, I don't know, some technical problem. Because I remember all these artworks. I've seen them. They are in my map with all these artworks. I have like this collages finished with these artworks but in some way they're not ended up in the final video but of course you know I'm copying these files two or three times when I'm working on the video first time I am copying them from the map I'm importing them to the editing program so I'm just like putting them to the playlist and then I'm replacing them like importing them from the playlist to the timeline where I'm already cutting like to the working table so I guess this artworks got lost in some way while importing files from you know from one place to another because I know that sometimes it happens to my video files as well like I'm importing the entire map a bulk of files to the program and then for example one or two are missing and of course when we are talking about 800 plus files it would be quite difficult to track them all and to be sure that nothing got lost so i'm sorry guys i swear you all this art works participated in my selection process where i was when i was picking up the winners but yeah, due to some technical problems, they did it ended up in this final video. So now it's your moment of justice. I promised you to bring all these artworks to the public. So and here you are. I'm sorry again so much. Yeah. So, and now let's finally move on to our project because we have extremely lot of work today. This is quite a big and a complicated project, so I will have to skip a week or maybe even two to be able to complete it. But anyway, I'm quite excited to start. So today we are working on this koi fish mermaid. I think this is such a unique design combining a mermaid 
a koi fish that is actually traditional fish for a Japanese culture. It has really like very deep meanings and also it combines the Japanese geisha aesthetics. So I'm totally in love with this design and I really can't wait to turn her into a doll. So I'm going to start working and you, if you're for the first time on my channel, if you had no idea about this contest or collaboration going on, then please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button and then of course don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes because it really helps to promote my art more people will be able to see it so thank you so much for being with me for joining me today if you're a new person and I'm going to start working this project I've decided to use this Laguna blue doll first of all I really like her face mold I think it's quite close to the face on the original artwork and then she also has webbed hands the same like the girl on the drawing and this fact convinced me completely because I was actually doubting a little bit for a while uh, between this doll and Draculora. But in the end, I'm sure that this is an ideal doll for our makeover today. So let's undress her and then I'll cut her hair very short. Now I will warm her head up with my hair dryer for two minutes and you know this is a pretty standard step in my routine. Hot air will make this rubber head soft and I will be able to disconnect it from the body. Then I take my tweezers and I remove the rest of the short hair that is still sitting inside of the head together with this nasty sticky glue. And after this I remove her makeup with pure acetone. Okay guys, today we will change our routine a little bit because normally I start with rerouting doll's hair and then drawing a face but this time I want to start with her body because we have some sculpting work to do today uh, because you see, this original character she has a very pretty fish tail instead of her legs and this is what we are going to make right now and first of all I'm going to remove the lower parts of the legs the upper part I'm going to keep and I will build the tail around them. You know, I think it's a very easy but also a very effective way to make a movable tail. You don't need to disconnect the legs completely and then make some new joints or some other, you know, system. You can perfectly use the connections that already exist. I also want to remove her underwear because, you know, the fish, the mermaid doesn't need it. And after this I will sand the bottom part of the body as well and like this the clay will stick better on. Thank you. 
Now I'm going to start building her tail and first of all I'm going to make some sort of a carrying construction out of warbler thermoplastic. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty, it will be completely hidden under a layer of clay. It will be just much more easier for me to sculpt the tail if I already have some sort of a backbone. And after this I can take my epoxy sculpt and I'm going to build the tail for our future mermaid. You can always use regular clear water to make the surface even and very smooth. This is a big plus point of working with epoxy sculpt. So guys, this is what I've made, the tail, so now I will let it dry for 24 hours and meanwhile to lose no time I can actually start working on her face and first of all I will cover it with a couple of layers of white acrylics. After this I spray it with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant and then I can start working on her skin tone. 
The description says that the doll should have a super pale cream color skin because she lives underwater in a cave and she doesn't really see any sunlight whatsoever. So I'm making it with my pan pastel soft pastels. And when I'm happy with her pale cream color skin, I can take my watercolor pencils and I start sketching her eyes and eyebrows using the original artwork as a reference. And you can see that she has really, really tiny eyebrows. And I think I can draw the lips already now. Okay, after this I start drawing the eyes more detailed using my watercolor pencils. And you know, I use a bunch of different brands. Faber Castell, Carandash Supracolor, Derwent. Uh, you know, I've made a video here on my channel already a while ago where I compared different brands of watercolor pencils, checked how they work on dolls, so I'm using kind of all of them from time to time. Now it's time to draw a heavy black wing eyeliner. It's quite a significant detail of her eye makeup. And after this I draw highlights using a white pencil. Then I add red wing-like eyeshadows, and this is another special feature of her look, of her makeup. And she also has like a stripe of it under her eye. After this I draw the bottom eyelashes, and after this I will add reflections to her eyes using white acrylics. So, we are done with the face for now, and you can see that the epoxy sculpt has become completely hard. So, now we can continue working on her tail, and first of all I'm going to sand the surface to make the shape more perfect. I've cut out a pair of fins out of Warbler Thermoplastic, so now I will attach them to the end of the tail and then we will cover the body with a couple of layers of white acrylics as well, the same like we've just done to her face. First of all, I will probably blush the top of her body, so for this I will first seal it with Mr. Super Clear sealant, the same like the face, and then I will apply a couple of layers of the same light cream pastels. So, now the face and the top of the body have the same skin tone and we can finally start painting the tail, 
but the problem is that I've just realized that I've missed another pair of fins in the middle of her body. I don't know, I'm probably blind or something stupid me. But anyway, it's never too late to add them. Well, it can be probably too late to add them, but right now it's not too late yet. So I've cut another pair of fins out of Warbler and now I will take my Dremel tool and I will remove the white paint very carefully just in places where the fins supposed to be. And after this I attach them to the cleaned areas. So everything looks good, the problem is solved and now we can finally add some color. From the description we know that her tail is pink with black spots and with gradients into red-orange. And this is exactly what I'm going to make now using my airbrush because this is an ideal tool to create gradients. So, here is the gradient, this is how her tail looks, yeah, everything looks pretty good to me. So now let's add the details and I'm going to start probably with painting the fins more detailed. So this is where I've ended up with the fins, look cute, and then it's finally time to draw the black spots on the tail and I'm going to sketch them first with a pencil and then I will use black acrylics to finalize the look of the spots. Okay, now the tail looks absolutely adorable, I think. All the spots and the fins, I don't know, it looks so, so good. And they're also very similar to the original picture. So I'm very satisfied, but we still need to add a couple of tiny details. First of all, she has pink freckles on her shoulders. It's maybe difficult to see on the picture, but, but they are there on her shoulders. So let's make them and you can see that I've made a hole in the cotton round to cover up the rest of the body and to expose just the shoulders where the freckles supposed to be. And then I simply spray the freckles on using a regular synthetic brush. Then I want to paint the fins on her arms and these webs between the fingers. And then according to the description she also has very long nails. So let's make them using a glue gun. And now her body has been officially finished and we can start working on her hairstyle. 
Her hair I will make out of this black acrylic yarn and first of all we will have to turn this yarn into hair and for this I will go like always through the sequence of steps. So first of all I cut it into shorter pieces. Then I tie them around barbecue sticks. After this I make the yarn loose and I brush it with cat brush. Then I make her hair perfectly straight using my hair straightener. And after this I will glue all this freshly made hair to her head using tacky glue. Ok guys, I've let the glue dry for a day and this is what I've got. Now I'm going to brush it to remove all this loose and not glued hair and after this we will style it. So today we're going for this traditional Japanese hairstyle and first of all I'm going to section her hair. I'm making a ponytail on the back of the head and the rest of her hair I split into four sections. So this is what I've got. And now I'm going to connect the ends of her hair to the ponytail section by section to create a hairdo that would look in some way, I don't know, like a flower with four petals. You can see it now on the reference picture what I'm trying to recreate. And you can see now that there is not much hair left to make a bun. So I'm going to use a special trick. I will take this fluffy yarn that we've got after brushing her hair and I will make some sort of a sausage. I don't know, I'm like felt in this yarn to make more like a tight, long piece of hair. And I will place it around our ponytail, close to the head, close to the scalp. And then I will cover it with the hair from the ponytail. And like this we will get a very nice looking bun made like out of a lot of hair. It doesn't look like there is not enough hair in this bun. So and now we still need to make two pieces of hair decoration. One is going to go on top of the bun and another one is going to be in front of her head, like above her face. The one that will be placed on the back of her head I'm making out of two pieces of warbler and I'm starting with attaching two pins to them to be able to fix the hair decoration to the doll's head later. And 
the one that will go to the front of her hairstyle I will make out of a toothpick. Both of the accessories have been decorated with green leaves, so I will use these leaves from the rose flowers to make it. And then I still want to attach a couple of chains to the decoration on the top of her head. So this is her head, completely finished, the face, the hairstyle, the accessories, everything. I will not attach lashes today because it's not really part of a traditional Japanese makeup. So guys, I think we can jump into my mom's part of the video and check her out, how is she doing there. You can see now that she has stretched silk fabric on a piece of carton, outlined the pattern of the future kimono, then she takes a special product for drawing on silk and she outlines all the contours of the fish skin pattern. And like this, paint will not run out of the borders. And then she covers the patterns with orange paint. So guys, and this is how it looks when the paint gets dry. Oh my god, it's so gorgeous. I just can't get enough this fabric this orange pattern on this cream color silk it's so gorgeous not normal but yeah it's not done of course yet and now it's time to sew it So, and here is finally the finished outfit, and I think this time my mom has officially outdone herself. I know, I probably tell it in every single video of mine, but I have nothing to do about the fact that my mom's skills just keep getting better and better, and she never fails to amaze me with her creations. This silk fabric is so beautiful and it also feels so nice, really amazing and these patterns, it's all so perfect. So now I still have to make the last accessory pieces for today and this is gonna be a long pipe, as long as her arm approximately, with a huge paper lantern tied to one end. She uses the light to find other fishes around her and make friends in this cold and dark sea. One end of this pipe is wood, 
while the other end is golden metal, you can see it all on the reference pictures and the lantern has a silhouette of a koi fish painted on it. So let's make it and I'm using of course my favorite warbler thermoplastic to make it. So this is how the pipe looks and now I still need to make a lamp and this is very important to make it very light otherwise my doll would not be able to hold it on a stick. So I will use this extra lightweight foam clay and I think it will be perfect. I don't want to make this lantern out of paper because otherwise it would be too fragile if I make it out of some clay, you know, foam clay, whatever, warbler it would stay forever like it is and if I really make it a paper lantern it might break you know in transit already while it's going to be traveling to Lady Wellflower. So you can see that I've made a ball out of it, now I will let it dry for 48 hours and meanwhile we can paint the pipe. So this is the pipe, it looks absolutely perfect and now let's go back to the lantern. The basic shape is already dry and now I will make two rings out of warbler and I will attach them to the top and to the bottom of the bowl. Now I will take this embroidery thread and I will attach it to the ball creating a texture. So after this I'm painting this fish with acrylics and with soft pastels. Then I draw a tiny koi fish on it.
now we still have to attach a thread to be able to hand this lantern to the pipe. So and here is finally my koi fish mermaid and I am just in love with her guys. I don't know, she's so gorgeous, she's so special. I don't know, I think it's one of my prettiest dolls ever. What do you think, guys? I don't know. And the most precious and special thing is that I would never come up with such a design myself. So I don't know how to thank Lady Wellflower for sharing her beautiful drawing, her beautiful art with me, with us, with all of us. I actually can't wait to hear Lady Wellflower's opinion about the way I've turned her artwork into a doll. And already in a couple of days I'm going to send this doll to Lady Wellflower and I really hope that she's going to enjoy her. I just need to find the right box for it because this doll is really big and it's too big for my regular boxes so I will have to find something, I don't know, something special. So, and how are you doing guys? Didn't fall asleep yet? I don't know, it's gonna be a long video I guess because I worked extremely long on this project but it was also really interesting for me so I hope it was interesting for you as well. Of course, I am looking forward to hear your opinion about this project. I'm sure you have a lot to say to me and to Lady Wellflower. So don't hesitate and leave a comment to let me know your thoughts about it. So guys, and that was my doll transformation of the week. I really hope you've enjoyed it today. And if so, please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. Of course, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button, and I will see you already very soon in my next Dory Paint video. Love you guys. Bye.